Dear students, in the last some modules, we have learnt about the various aspects of forensic science. In this module, we will learn about the photography. After studying this module, you shall be able to learn history of camera and photography, understand basic principles of photography, understand terminology used in photography and learn about different types of cameras. First, the introduction of photography. The word photography comes from the Greek word photos which means light, graphos which means writing, meaning writing with light. The word camera is also derived another Greek word camera meaning anything within an arched cover or enclosure. Photographic camera is a light tight box with light sensitive material that is the film at one end and a lens or pinhole to admit light on the other end. Now a little bit of history of camera and photography. Motsu of China appeared approximately 500 BC and Aristotle of Greece it is between 384 to 322 BC observed the formation of inverted image when light passed through a pinhole and both of them investigated independently. At the beginning of the 19th century the first use of chemistry for photography was done by Thomas Wedgwood. He made negative by placing a drawing on glass on a paper previously treated with silver nitrate solution and finally exposing it to the sunlight. William Henry Fox Talbot in 1835 independently produced a light sensitive paper by bathing it first in common salt when dried in silver nitrate together the chemicals form silver chloride. Talbot's photogram was of course negative but he soon evolved the method of reversing them to form positive by printing them on a second sheet of sensitized paper. Sir John Herschel termed the first picture as negative and the reversed one as positive. It is the fundamental principle of modern photography. By the advice of Sir Herschel, he adopted a more permanent way of fixing by using hyposulfite of soda to wash out unexposed silver halide. By using potassium bromide instead of common salt, he made more sensitive emulsion. In 1847, collodion, a protection for wounds was discovered. It was used as a base by Archer in 1851 who exposed it in wet conditions so it was called as wet collodion process. Charles Bennett in 1878 used gelatin to form dry plate and it was the true ancestor of film materials. In 1888 George Eastman first introduced Kodak camera which was laden in factory and dwelt in the factory after exposure. In 1889 Eastman introduced to public the transparent celluloid film which could even be processed by the amateurs. Even with the passage of time various developmental work continued on paper, films, photographic chemicals, lenses, cameras and other specialization related to the present day modern photography. Even when the digital photography have been evolved surpassing the age old paper, film and chemical processes. The camera works in much the same way as our eyes. The lens in our eye focuses the image on the nerve cells in the retina at the back of the eye and this image is sent to the brain by the optic nerves. Let us take a simple example. Hold a pencil in front of your eyes at about 2 feet distance. Objects away will appear out of focus. When you look beyond the pencil to the far end of the room, it immediately comes into focus. When you look beyond the pencil to the far end of the room, it immediately comes into focus, the pencil being blurred. The muscles of the eyes are acting on the lens, adjusting it so that the image we are looking at is sharply focused on the back of the eyes. After that the ancestor of our camera came and it is a light tight box 
with the following parts. First, a lens to produce an image, a fitting to hold a light sensitive film or plate, a focusing mechanism for subjects at different distance, diaphragm, a metal sheet with hole kept in between the lens and photo sensitive plate so as to control the intensity of light, shutter, a mechanical device by which the light entering through the lens is normally prevented from falling on the film but it can be displaced for a certain span of time by some button so as to pass the light for certain duration on the film for exposure. Next is viewfinder. It is a device to see the area being photographed. This is how we can know the area being covered by the lens. Now we will discuss about the light and the properties of light. Light. Light is a form of energy which helps to see the objects in the material world around us. That is, it is the link between the eyes and the viewed objects. Visible light waves are the only waves we can see from the complete spectrum of the electromagnetic waves. We see these light waves as the colors of the rainbow. Each color of the rainbow has a particular wavelength. Red has the longest wavelength and violet has the shortest wavelength among the seven colors of the rainbow. That is the Vibgyor. Vibgyor is seen when the white light is split into its component colors. When it passes through a prism, this phenomenon is known as dispersion. The color as mentioned are like violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red. Before violet, there is an invisible ray called ultraviolet and after red, the invisible ray is called the infrared rays. These invisible rays can also be detected by photographic plates or films. A typical human eye can see light from 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer of the electromagnetic spectrum. This range is called visible range. Not all colors that human eyes can distinguish are in the visible spectrum such as brown which is mix of multiple visible colors. Although photography is possible even in non-visible range of electromagnetic spectrum such as in ultraviolet and infrared region, here we will only concentrate on photography in the visible spectrum region. Now we will discuss about the various sources of light in photography. Two type of light sources are used namely natural light and artificial light. Hence it becomes obvious that a natural light source comes from different sources of nature on which we do not have any control. Their availability and location is completely governed by nature. As a photographer one should only understand the characteristics of the natural light and how to use it in the best way. On the other hand artificial lights are man-made lights which are sometimes completely under control and we have the freedom of choice how to use them either as a single source or in a mixed way. Most forms of commercial or advertising forensic scientific photography uses artificial light. Now next parameter is color temperature. Color temperature can be explained as in simple terms as the color an object produces under different light sources. That means various natural and artificial light sources produces different color temperature. This varies from red to blue. Candles, tungsten bulbs and sunsets give light which is close to the red color. Hence they give warm look to the pictures. On the other hand, clear sky blues give a cool blue light. Color temperature is generally recorded in Kelvin which is in the SI unit of absolute temperature. Cool colors like blue and white usually have color temperatures above 7000 Kelvin. On the other hand, warmer colors like orange and red have color temperatures around 2000 Kelvin mark. Photographic films are sensitive to color temperature. There are daylight type and tungsten light type films available which gives natural color when exposed in respective light sources. 
In digital cameras, however, we can control the color temperature through white balance setting. So at different time of the day, at different conditions, we have different colors. Human eyes are so highly developed that they cannot see the change. On the other hand, brain quickly adapts to the difference. But color films and recently the digital sensors cannot adapt. As mentioned before, color films can only be set to one color temperature, usually 5500 Kelvin which is the average color of a sunny day noon or 3200 Kelvin which is the temperature of a sunny daylight. Now we will discuss about the various terminologies used in photography. First is films. The heart of the film is a transparent plastic material that is the celluloid called the base. The back side of the film is generally shiny and has numerous coatings that are important for physical handling and processing of the Film. The other side of the film is the sensitive side where the photochemistry happens. There are 20 or more than 20 separate layers coated in the film that are mutually less than 1000 of an inch thick. Much of this thickness is consumed by a very special binder called gelatin that grips the imaging components together. Then part of the layers which are coated on the transparent film don't form images. These layers which don't form images are present to filter the light and to control the chemical reaction which occurs in the corresponding steps. Submicron sized crystals of silver halide are there in the imaging layer that act as photon detectors. These crystals are supposed to be the heart of the photographic film as they undergo a photochemical reaction when exposed to various modes of electromagnetic radiations that is the light. Silver halide grains are prepared by mixing silver nitrate and halide salts like chloride, bromide and iodide in complex ways which results in a range of crystal sizes, shapes and compositions. Then these undeveloped grains are chemically modified to increase their light sensitivity to make these grains more sensitive towards blue, green and red light, organic molecules known as spectral sensitizers are added to the surface of the grains. These molecules adsorbs attach to the surface of the grain and transfers the energy from a green, red or blue photon to the silver halide crystal as a photon electron. Some other chemicals are then added within the grains during its growth process or added on the surface of the grain. These chemicals affect the light sensitivity of the grain known as its photographic speed. Now there are generally three types of films, black and white negative film, color negative film and color positive film that is the transparency. Second parameter is the film speed. Film speed is a unit to express the sensitivity of the films towards the light. That means how much amount of light is required by a particular film to give a standard exposure. More sensitive film takes fewer more amounts of light and time to create an image in a particular lighting condition. The main units to express film speeds are ASA, ISO and DIN. ASA stands for American Standard Association, ISO stands for International Standard Organization, DIN stands for Dutish Industries Norm. More sensitive the film, less the amount of exposure is required for taking a photograph and vice versa. More sensitive the film or higher the film speed, the picture becomes more grainy and lower the film speed, sharper would be the picture. Film speed is very important while calculating exposure of a photograph or the power of an electronic flash gun. Earlier the camera exposure meter worked according to the film speed setting of the camera. Once a film of a particular speed is loaded in a camera, all the photographs are to be exposed calculating exposure according to that particular film speed. Now third important parameter is exposure. Exposure is the amount of light required to create a standard image on a photosensitive medium. 
of a given sensitivity. Exposure is the combined effect of light falling on the photosensitive material that is the film and the sensitivity of the film that is film speed. The effect of light falling on the film can be controlled by aperture and shutter speed. The sensitivity of the film is another controlling factor for the exposure which is called film speed which has been explained in the last unit. So technically it is the joint calculation of intensity of light and its duration. Next parameter is aperture. Aperture is an opening in between or at the back of a lens which controls the amount of light coming through it. It may be fixed or it may be variable. Bigger the opening more the light and smaller the opening lens the light falling on the sensitive material. This is one of the devices to control the exposure of the film or digital medium. It is expressed as F number and every next bigger aperture gives double the amount of light. Evaluation of the opening of the lens will vary the amount of light passing through the lens. If we increase the aperture or reduce the F stop number more light will pass through the lens. Every step towards higher F number halves the light and every step towards smaller F number that is bigger hole doubles the amount of light. So we take a photo with a bigger aperture than required. More light will reach the photosensitive material and the photograph will become brighter than a standard exposed image and if it is smaller it will become darker than normal. Next parameter is depth of field. One more thing that is intricately related to aperture is depth of field. Depth of field refers to how much of the picture is in focus. When we focus the camera lens to give a sharp image of a particular subject, other objects closer or far away in the photo are going to be out of focus. If they are at a different distance from the focused object, the decline of the sharpness for a particular F number of the other objects is gradual. A shallow depth of field means that only the subject is in focus while else is out of focus. A deep depth of field means that everything is in focus but for our practical purposes we select the zone in front of and behind the focus subject so that the blur in this zone is too small to be noticeable and can be accepted as sharp. This zone is called the depth of field. So the aperture also controls how much of the photo is in the focus. If the aperture is small then everything will be in the focus while a large aperture will make objects blurred even slightly far from the subject. Next is shutter and shutter speed. This is a part of a camera which blocks or restricts the light from entering the film plane and exposes the film. The mechanical or electromechanical system for controlling the time during which light is allowed to reach the light sensitive material in a camera that is film or digital sensor is known as shutter. It consists of some means of covering the image created by the lens. Opening or uncovering for a predetermined duration of time and covering it again it can be activated by releasing the shutter release button. There are mainly two types of shutter A that is diaphragm or leaf shutter B focal plane shutter. First diaphragm or leaf shutter type consists of three to five metal blades which can open outwards leaving a clear hole for exposure and covers again after a present time. The speed is controlled by pinions and levers. This type is generally mounted in between the lens components. Next is focal plane shutter. It consists of one or more roller blinds of fabric or metal having generally variable slit which moves across inside back of the camera just before the film or the sensitive material when the release is pressed. It may move up and down or across from left to right or vice versa. When exposed time begins the first curtain is released to start its travel. As it moves the first curtain passes across the film frame allowing light to fall on the film. 
when the first curtain has completed its travel, the frame is fully open. When exposure time ends, the second curtain is released to begin its travel and close off light to the film. Shutter speed is the duration of time generally expressed in seconds, during which any type of shutter remains fully open for exposure. This excludes the opening and closing time which is considered to be negligible along with aperture shutter speed indirectly controls the light falling on the sensitive material. The correlation between shutter speed and aperture size is a direct one. Since aperture and shutter speed, both of them controls the amount of light reaching onto the film and since both doubles and reduce in a scale of one time, one x or 100%, it means you can freely interchange the settings on shutter timing and lens opening for respective effect and yet retaining your preferred exposure setting. This factor is constant when we consider the film speed to be constant. So understanding and setting exposure according to requirement is very important for taking photographs. Sometimes exposure compensation is also used to take intentional under or overexposed photograph for achieving a desired effect. If the camera functions automatically, the exposure compensations lets you to lighten a photograph, you increase the exposure. To darken a photograph, you decrease the exposure. The amount you increase or decrease the exposure is specified in stops. Next, we will discuss about the various types of cameras. According to technology, there are basically two types of cameras, film or the analog cameras and second is the digital cameras. Film camera is made up of three basic components that is the optical, that is the lens, chemical the film and mechanical the camera body. First the film camera. Film cameras can be broadly classified as per their size, mechanism and utility. View cameras, point and shoot cameras, twin reflex cameras, single reflex cameras and specialty cameras. First we will discuss about view cameras. View cameras are built like an accordion with a lens in the front, a viewing screen in the back and flexible bellows in the between. The films used in these cameras are quite large. These cameras give sharp details. What we see in the viewfinder is exactly what we get on the negative. In these cameras, we can change the position of the lens and film relative to each other to correct the distortion. View cameras are bulky and must be used on tripods. We have to use black focusing cloth at the back as the image on the viewfinder is not so bright and appears reversed and upside down. Rapid setup and shooting with these cameras are difficult. These are normally used for commercial studio photography, landscapes and architectural photography. Now next is point and shoot cameras. The viewfinder provides a rough idea of what is in view but not the real image. These cameras are easy to handle with simple features. They are categorized into two types, compact and rangefinder cameras. A camera as small or compact as possible with built-in features such as automatic exposure, flash, auto or fixed focus, easy film loading and film advance for easy picture taking can be described as a compact or point shoot camera. Next one is a rangefinder camera is called so because they focus using a dual image range finding device turning the focusing ring superimposes two images in a line to give perfect focus. While using a rangefinder camera, the user never look through the lens but focuses and composes through a window which is present on the top right just like on a disposable camera. Next type is twin lens reflex cameras. A twin lens reflex camera is a type of camera with two objective lenses of the same focal length. One of the objective lens is the photographic lens which takes the photograph while the other lens 
is used for the waist level viewfinder system. In addition to the object, the viewfinder comprises of a 45 degree mirror, a matte focusing screen at the top of the camera and a pop-up hood surrounding it. The two objective lenses are connected so that the focus shown on the focusing screen will be exactly the same as on the film. However, many low priced twin lens reflexes have fixed focus models. Most of the TLRs use leaf shutters with shutter speeds up to 1 by 500 second with a B setting. For practical purposes, all TLRs are film cameras, most often using 120 films. Although there are many cameras with other formats, expensive TLRs have a pop-up magnifying glass to assist the user in focusing the camera. In addition to that, many have a sports finder consisting of a square hole punched in the back of the pop-up hood and a knockout in the front. Next is single lens reflexed cameras. Single lens reflexed cameras of or SLRs are more complex form of cameras than any other type of cameras. The viewfinders on other camera types are quite simple and usually have nothing to do with the main lens of the camera. In basic types, the viewfinder is just a rectangular shaped hole and in more complex types, the viewfinder is somehow connected to the main lens for focusing purposes. Twin lens reflex cameras, but still these systems are simpler than SLR cameras. The key parts for the light to move through the camera are lens, mirror, focusing screen, prism and eyepiece. The lens is made up of several optical elements to form the image on the film. The mirror is small, light and capable of moving up and down. Focusing screen is made up of ground glass and when image is projected on it, the image becomes visible and doesn't just go through as with regular glass. The prism, its shape may vary but the idea remains the same, is made up of glass and it reflects the image from the focusing screen to the eyepiece which itself is just a piece of glass or simple lens that we are looking through. To control exposure in a SLR camera, one must know how to control the shutter speed, aperture and set the exposure meter to find out the correct exposure. To start with controlling shutter speed, there are both analog dials and digital display to set the shutter speed. The light meter or exposure meter inside a camera both in an old SLR camera and the latest camera helps us to achieve correct exposure and sometimes gives us automatic exposure in the program or automatic modes. To make the exposure meter work correctly, we must set the film speed accordingly. The film speed of a SLR camera can be set manually in the range of ISO 12 to 6400. This calibrates the built-in exposure or light meter to calculate the amount of light required for a particular scene and help the photographer to determine exposure, film speed of the loaded film can also be known through the DX film cord reader in the chamber where the 35mm film is loaded in the camera. In the end, I will conclude with the summary. Uh, in this module, uh, we learnt about the history of the camera and photography, various light sources and colour temperature various terminologies used in photography like film, film speed, exposure, aperture, depth of field, shutter and shutter speed. Also, we learnt about types of cameras like analog cameras and digital cameras. In the end, we learnt about various types of analog cameras such as view cameras, point and shoot cameras, twin reflex camera and single reflex camera.